Hello and welcome to this 591 Lab, Comtia Linux Plus XK0-005 Review Q&A with Demo Lab. My name is Philip and I want to thank you for joining us here today. Here's some brief information about 591 Lab. We provide exceptional exam preparation experience for a variety of certifications in companies such as Cisco, Comtia, Huawei, Aruba, Juniper, Palo Alto and Fortinet exam tracks. In today's episode, we're going to focus on four sample questions and answers from the current CompTIA Linux Plus XK0-005 exam. After this, we're going to do a demo lab focusing on topics from each of the four questions. Our first question, a DevOps engineer needs to allow incoming traffic to ports in the range 4000 to 5000 on a Linux server. Which of the following commands will enforce this rule? We have four options here. And the correct answer is B. We would use IP tables command with a dash T option, a specified keyword filter. Then we would use the dash capital A, which means the pen. And then we would use the keyword input space dash small P, which stands for protocol. Here we're dealing with TCP. Then we have the dash dash D port, which stands for destination port. Now this is the port range, 4000 colon 5000. So any ports within this range is going to be covered here within this rule. Then we specify dash small j, which is going to specify the action. In our case, we want to accept, and we're going to specify the keyword accept in all caps. The second question, a Linux engineer has been notified about a possible deletion of logs from the file slash op slash op slash logs. The engineer needs to ensure the log can only be written into without removing previous entries. Which of the following commands would be best to use to accomplish this task? And we have four options here. And the correct answer is A, we would use the cha ATTR command with a plus small a option and we would specify the path to the file. For our next question, a Linux engineer set up two local DNS servers, 10.10.10.10 and 10.10.10.20 and was testing email connectivity to the local mail server using a mail command on a local machine when the following error appeared, cannot open mail on port 25. Which of the following commands could the engineer use to query the DNS server to get mail server information? We have four options here. And the correct answer is B. We would issue the dig command and specify the server that houses the MX records. In this case, if we look at the output of the slash etc slash resolve.con file, we can see it says 10.10.10.20 is listed. And we have a comment here, it's saying it holds email records. So we would specify that IP address here. And then we would specify the domain. And then we would specify the domain name. And lastly, we specify the keyword MX. Our last question. In order to copy data from another VLAN, a systems administrator wanted to temporarily assign an IP address 10.0.6.5 with a slash 24-bit mask to the newly added network interface ENP1S0F1. Which of the following commands should the administrator run to achieve the goal? We have four options here. And the correct answer is A. We would use the IP ADDR command with the add keyword and we would specify the IP address along with the subnet mask. And then we would specify the keyword dev to specify the device type and then we would specify the interface name here. I'm going to bring up our lab now so we can take a look at these various commands that we covered in these various questions. I have brought up a CentOS distribution for this demo. First, let's take a look at the existing IP table rules. We we'll use a hyphen capital L and we will get an error this is because the user Philip has limited administrative rights on the system. Now let's try to run that command once again. Here we go. The input, the output, and the forward chain. Now we're going to add our rule as we saw in the question. 
we'll use the hyphen small t now we'll specify the keyword filter now we'll specify dash hyphen capital a now we are specifying the name of the chain we want to use here we're focusing on the input chain dash small p we're just going to specify the protocol we're dealing with tcp dash dash d port it stands for destination port now we're going to specify the port range hyphen small j which is going to specify the action in our case we want to accept in all caps now if we rerun the IP tables command with a dash capital L option. We'll notice this time a rule has been added to we'll chain input and it translated the port for us as we can see here. Next we're gonna focus on the chat ATTR command. We'll use the ls ATTR command to list the current attribute for that file. Currently, no attribute has been set up for this file. Uh, you see the echo command, and I'm going to specify some content. I'm going to pipe that to the slash up, slash up, slash logs file. Now, let's rerun the cat command and we will see the content of the file has been changed now we want to prevent this and only allow changes to be appended to the file we'll use the cha attr command we'll get an error because we have limited access using this philip account we we'll use a small a with a plus symbol which means to append Now the reason why I got the error is because it says operation is not permitted. So I need to either grant the user Philip administrative access or I can switch to the root user. So I'll switch to the root user. Now let's try to run that command once again. This time you'll notice we have a small a when we list the attribute for that file. I'll switch back to the Philip user. Now let's try to run that echo command once again. And this time we're gonna get an error telling us operation not permitted. As you can see here, it says operation not permitted. Now we can only append changes to the file. This time I'll use two greater than angle brackets. And I'll specify the path to the file. This time when I use the echo command and I specify the two greater than angle brackets, the changes were appended to the bottom of the file as you can see here. So this is how we would use the chunk ATTR command. Now we're going to take a look at the dig command. So for example, in our question, we were trying to find the MX record for a certain domain. So the syntax would be dig, the at symbol, and now we would need to specify the server that we want to query the domain for. Let's say we want to query Google's DNS server, which is a.a.a.8. .a 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 .a. And we want to find the MX records for facebook.com Here we're specifying MX This is a particular record that we're interested in And we can see the results that was returned Here it says for facebook.com with a dot That means everything with facebook.com in it The type is MX. And here we could see the actual record. Now let's say we want to look at the name server records for Facebook.com. We would remove the keyword MX and we would specify NS. And here 
you see the result for the name servers for facebook.com it's telling us that facebook has a number of different name servers that is handling the load when someone tries to do a resolution for the facebook domain we can also take a look at pointer records specifying ptr we have the start of authority and we have the various name servers here for the pointer records and this is how we would use the dig command next let's take a look at how we would assign an ip address with the ip addr command if i simply specify ip addr it's going to print the current network settings for the system in our case the physical interface's name is ens160 and it currently has an ip address assigned to it now let's say we want to add a secondary address to this interface the syntax would be ip addr and we would use the keyword add and now we will specify the IPv4 address. Now we need to specify the subnet mask. We're going to say it's a slash 24 bit subnet mask. Now we'll specify the keyword dev, which stands for device. And lastly, we'll specify the actual interface's name. And lastly, we'll specify the interface's name. We got an error, operation not permitted. Now we can either grant the user Philip administrative access by assigning him inside of the sudoers file, or we can configure the IP address as the root user. In our case, we're gonna use the sudo command. We got this error because the format of the IP address, here we go. Now if we rerun the IP ADDR command, we can now see the second address has been assigned to the ENS160 interface. Now let's say we wanted to remove the secondary IP address that we just assigned to the ENS160 interface. We will issue the IP ADDR command once again. And now we'll use the keyword delete. I will specify the IP address. Keyword dev. And lastly, we need to specify the interface. And once again, we get operation not permitted. So we'll prepend this command with sudo in front of it. And this time the command was successful. Now if we rerun the IP ADDR command, we'll notice the secondary IP address has been removed from the ENS160 interface. So this is how we can leverage the IP ADDR command to either add or remove an IP address from within the Linux system. All right, let's go back to the slides. I want to thank you all for attending today's class at 591 Lab. We hope you found the material informative and helpful. Please don't hesitate to contact us. We appreciate your participation and look forward to seeing you in our future classes. My name is Philip and I want to thank you for choosing 591 Lab.